Uh, Podluck says, The Last Samurai actor defends movie against white savior backlash. This one was very interesting to me because what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through some of this. Uh, Ken Wat, this is from Ken Watanabe talking about this, but I want to read this and I'm going to read you the description of the movie, how it's given on IMDb, and tell me if it doesn't seem kind of insane that people have a problem with this. Whatever your thoughts are on like how movies have been made with like white people taking over roles or people of other uh, races taking over roles and stuff like this, they recently... Um, who was Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so, so the uh, my my favorite example is like um, not in movies, but like they recently got rid of Danny Rand as like Iron Fist because he's like a white dude who does martial arts, uh, and they're like, you can't do that, and so they make an Asian guy the but martial. That whole artist. Cobra Kai TV you, show gets to stay. That gets a pass. Uh, well, uh, it gets. Yeah, do you dislike in? that one? No, I no, don't. That, that, like that one, that? but like. It's we can't make new things about white people who do. Oh, oh, yeah. It's also unevenly enforced. But the the point is, so it says, uh, in an interview with The Guardian, Watanabe, who was nominated for an Academy Award for his re supporting role in the film, defended The Last Samurai against those claiming that it was nothing more than a white savior movie. Uh, in the actor's opinion, the movie provided a valuable chance for Asian characters to be portrayed in a way that moved on from many years of racial stereotyping. The actor said, I didn't think of it like that. I just thought we had an opportunity to depict Japan to depict Japan in a way that we never were able to before. So we thought we were making something special. Before The Last Samurai, there was the stereotype of Asian people with glasses, buck teeth, and a camera. It was stupid, but after The Last Samurai came out, Hollywood tried to be more authentic when it came to Asian stories. So one of my problems that I have with most of the people in these spheres is that they want to pretend like all the progress and all the growth that's ever happened in these industries has happened in like the last five years. Mm. Uh, they they want to pretend like Hollywood wasn't always... We were evil, and then we decided not to be evil one day at random. Exactly. And we had now we're great. We had a committee meeting, and we're like, we've we got to like, renounce guys, being evil. we're evil. Let's just stop being evil. So, guys, and then it worked. played out. Evilness in the movie industry, it's so over. <laughs> but it's just <laughs> Canceled. Like, uh, the arts is famously a place for people with progressive views the business side of it why not though? so much why, have to be? why why do i'm not i i don't know why i'm just telling Maybe you they oppress conservative the, voices yes the fact that they're like subversive in some way yeah uh, I don't so, know. so it goes on and says, while The Last Samurai came out at a time when there were more calls for diversity in movie roles for all minority groups, there has been an ongoing battle in Hollywood to try and get the balance right to please everyone. That is a literal impossible task. You will never, ever, 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 ever make everyone happy. You know what's crazy? I see so much stuff right now. I follow a lot of like psychology or sociology uh, topics and writers. And mm -hmm. like there's a lot of self-help books that are like, stop being a people pleaser. Being a people pleaser ultimately makes everyone including yourself unhappy unless you're the hollywood casting directors you guys gotta make this work sucks but that's to the be thing. you like they're pretending to be people pleasing but they actually have contempt for the audiences it's because they hate everyone like i guess being a people pleaser in your own life does make you resent other people so it makes sense mm -hmm. yep. so it says while there have been changes in the fact that asian characters are now being seen in more prominent roles something that took a huge leap forward with the success of squid games on netflix as well as marvel's uh, release of shang chi and the legend of the ten rings they act like uh bruce lee wasn't a thing or jackie chan wasn't a thing or jet lee wasn't a thing or any of these actors weren't a thing in like the 2000s and the 90s and the 80s and 70s mm -hmm. that's annoying uh th that's Maybe annoying they were me. impressed uh, even if they didn't know it well, well and one of the problems they i have with that Act like Asian cinema was not real. Like Hong Kong cinema. Yeah, like Hong Kong cinema wasn't a thing. So it says, mm -hmm. however, there are those who argue that representation in some movies and TV shows is being pushed to the point where every production is some uh, one of from each race, gender, sexual orientation, and more, which doesn't necessarily put the right people in the right roles. Uh, when this noise arises, it sets off another wave of usually toxic social media po posts, and then the cycle begins again. They're right. This, this is what happens literally every time. You cannot make everyone happy. Everyone argues. You you start over. But what I want to talk about is I want to read you the synopsis of this movie and tell me if this doesn't sound like I, I saw The Last Samurai. It's been so long that I remember literally nothing about it. I was so young when I saw it. But so it says in the 1870s, Captain Nathan Algren, a cynical veteran of the American Civil War who, uh, who will work for anyone, is hired by Americans who want lucrative contracts with the Emperor of Japan to train the peasant conscripts for the first standing Imperial Army in modern warfare using weapon, in modern warfare using firearms. 
The Imperial uh, Amora, played by Masato Harada, uh, cabinet's first priority is to repress a rebellion of traditionalist samurai, hereditary warriors who remain devoted to the sacred dynasty, but reject the westernizing policy and refuse the firearms. Yet when his ill-prepared superior forces, uh, force sets out too soon, their panic allows the sword-wielding samurai to crush them. Badly wounded, Algren's courageous stand makes the samurai leader... Kats, uh, Katsumoto, uh, played by Kent Watanabe, spare his life. Once nursed back to health, he learns to know and respect the old Japanese way and participates as an advisor in Katsumoto's failed attempt to save the Bushido tradition. So I don't see that as white savior. I see that as somebody who goes, uh, experiences another culture and grows. But because but it is... That's not allowed anymore. That, it's not allowed well, anymore. And that would imply that they saw white culture and grew in a positive way from it right yes which would be or against narrative have you seen this movie that's what i was whispering to you uh i did when i was a kid i don't remember much of it but i'm saying he he experiences their culture and grows it's not that he goes there and changes them into their ways well, it's Ex like it's both ways like yeah obviously the the culture is affected by him he's affected by their culture which is what it is that's we literally just the story of Humanity, all humanity at all like, times but but that's like something we're like so um obsessive compulsive about now yeah. that we can't comprehend it it's fascinating to me like how the <laughs> the like the your modern day progressive audience literally thinks they are the first people in the world to discover these things right and look at any attempt previously because it's not held to the standard that they believe is worthy of today in 2022 that that is somehow bad uh, if anything, this was more of an equitable approach than the one we're taking now, which is that no one can uh, engage with a culture that is not their own. Otherwise, you're appropriating it. Right. So it's just that that baffles my... Unless uh, you're bashing European or, culture. Or, yes. Then it's fine. Well, even, even that, yeah. like, I, I hesitate to, to go that far in the discussion. I'm just sick of Sorry, the... Brett. I'm just sick of the bar. <laughs> just, I'm just walking up to the line. I'm not, <laughs> say, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that, like, to me, it's like, th that's where we expect these conversations to go. But to me, th this is one of those Thank things where you. I just don't know what they want. Like, they literally expect everything... They don't everything. even know what they want, Brett. Yeah. They just want to complain. That's I, what they want. Well, I'm here looking for a little bit of logic and a little bit of grace, and I'm getting well, none of it from And I people. think part of it is, like, this expectation of culture like they want everyone to fall in line in the most perfect way and I think when you're really trying to make progress you accept like um, you accept uh, you're a little bit more forgiving on when people err right yeah. like you just want to see people start to try as opposed to holding everyone to a standard which they won't reach yeah. and so everyone's afraid to try yeah. and you you want to go ahead and you can read that super chat because it's relevant to this topic before we go on to the move sure. on to the next thing in, Waffles in public. Sensei said not crying about it but Last of the Mohicans and The Last Samurai are both movies about a dying culture has a white guy playing the last survivor I, I do wonder if some of that has to do with the fact that it's a western made movie so you draw from your country's own experience as you interact with the other culture if the movie had been made in Japan it likely would have had a different protagonist in the film, right? Uh, at the time now, you it's theoretically poss or probable that in America, because we are such a ethnically and racially diverse culture here, that we were, probably would uh, hi um, cast somebody of a different race or gender or, I or, or ethnicity than white now. Or we wouldn't do that now. We would mm -hmm. put somebody in from another group. So is that bad? Like, but is it bad? Because of that, we're interpreting a movie about an interaction between two cultures in a much different way yes. than, mm -hmm. than we otherwise would have. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just, these are the things where I, I feel like, whereas when it's created, it was done without malice and with uh, focus on story. Uh, and to tell a good story, whereas when the people interpret it now, they interpret it as if it was done with malice. Yeah, it's I sort feel of like just like the remake of of Mulan. Like yes. it was taken, all of the levity was just gone. Mm -hmm. It's like we pretended that was never a movie for children. Yeah, I think that like a lot of these movies at the time were just movies. They're just entertainment. Yes. They're a different mm -hmm. perspective on a different world. Like you know, it wasn't anything intended as like a barbed insult. And now we feel afraid of what we've created and we are unwilling to just accept that like it was made with good intention because even if it was it did something wrong and we have to punish everything that goes wrong and i i, I just i hate the way that culture has gone that way because it stifles creativity mm -hmm. uh in my opinion 
Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.